Spridrov is a newly formed venture by General Motors to focus on delivery, delivery as an ecosystem. We are working very closely with the broader GM organization to bring electrical vehicles that are purposely built for what we term last mile delivery. Think of everything it takes to get packages to your home, to your business, the stuff that we've gotten really accustomed to, as well as a little electric carts, we call them traces. These are electrically propelled devices that basically radically change the sort of human demands of the job and all the software required to deploy those to sort of stitch it tightly together and create a full system. Well, as you can imagine, we are extremely blessed to have a company that is extremely good at developing and deploying things at scale, brings a tremendous amount of credibility to the vehicles that we've already deployed in the field in within 12 months of, of being announced. And as a result, we find ourselves in, in an admirable situation because of the relationship with General Motors. At the same time, the reason we've been stood up as a, as a different company is because we're tackling a, a space with a much broader view than just the vehicle alone. This Evo 600 van is a 600 cubic feet van, so think of it as you know, about 17 cubic meters of cargo space, but really specially built for the use case. And this is our entry vehicle, right? This is what we choose to launch with because it did have that sort of broad appeal. It's a very efficient platform for an electric vehicle and it really meets the needs of today. But we didn't stop just with those vehicle attributes. We went really deep in understanding what was going to work best for the driver, what was going to work best for the fleet manager. And there's thousands of touch points, whether it's the stepping height for the vehicle, the location of cup holders, the predisposition of a bulkhead door, what it means to have that step-in van experience. Why? Because these are extremely grueling jobs with extreme job demands, right? These are drivers that in the US we see upwards of 150 stops per day. In Europe we see a typical number of 90 stops per day. And this is an extremely repetitive workload that we are really aiming to humanize here. We are still early in deployment. Our Vehicles are in the field, they've been delivering everything from Christmas gifts last December through sort of regular workloads of peak hours. We even had the opportunity to visit with them recently and we were able to see how the drivers were reacting and extremely positive response to that. Even when we have run into issues, we were also able to see how well the machine was able to respond. In other words, our, our engineering teams were able to come up with software patches, deploy them. So overall, the reception has been extremely positive and we're super proud of the team. This is a program that came together in record time. We were able to deliver vehicles you know, within 12 months of announcing the existence of the company, really 20 months beginning to end, and, and really um, sort of puts us in a, in a very different light as a, as a credible player. You're also asking about the trace, and we were able to also try out a couple of pilots very early on, and the results were phenomenal. Um, we were able to see in dense urban areas, think of New York, this device is deployed in existing vehicles, and the very early observations were that we were able to decrease the curb time, the amount of time the vehicle is offloading vehicles, offloading packages by 50%. And that's a huge performance improvement. These were then uh, picked up by runners who could then very quickly deploy them to their ultimate destination. And the overall efficiency gain was 25%, which in this business is pretty much unheard of for a single change. Um, we're very much looking forward to operationalizing this and generalizing it to multiple use cases. And that's been the focus of the team. What we, what we lean on the most is that sort of very curated, special purpose design approach to building this, right? And the fact that we were able to confirm that it actually works. So as a result, we find ourselves building something that is not only decarbonizing, but adding efficiencies as well. And we have a tremendous amount of momentum now to allow us to even build on that further, right? So we'll be continuing to look for opportunities to create a, a, a better, more tailored experience in the vehicle and be able to make that vehicle sort of the compute platform on the edge as well as the zero emission vehicle that gets you from point A to point B. So the mission is much broader for us. Decarbonization challenge, I think, starts with the fact that today there's not enough supply, right? Um, we are in, in an in a enviable situation that people are reacting 
to the, the, the sort of the world as they are today and putting extremely aggressive decarbonization goals. And with the backing of GM, we will be able to ramp up our production and meet that demand. The next challenge is going to be the charging infrastructure. Today we're learning tons from our early, our early deployments, our, our, our partners, our launch partners are learning as well, and we will also be able to leverage the broader GM ecosystem to bring comprehensive solutions for infrastructure so that our customers can not only just deal with electrification but really thrive in it and see the benefits from a total cost of ownership point of view, from a simplified logistics point of view as well. People like myself join because we want to be part of, of changing. I often feel that today the, the, the infrastructure is, is flexing its muscles in ways it was never intended to because of the explosion of, of the demand, the, the, the never ending sort of uh, um, upgrade of expectations from consumers. And for us, I think it starts with can we create a more efficient way of delivery where you can do more with less? Creating a better consumer experience doesn't necessarily automatically mean putting more vehicles on the road, but we're also very, very tuned into what the strains on the workforce are, and we see a tremendous opportunity for automation in the space. We see a tremendous opportunity for creating a more human job with things like electrically propelled devices, with um, you know, self-driving technology being applied in, in a responsible manner in this space. And we're super excited about what we can bring as a system into market.